In this video, I'm going to show you how to design a bin storage rack in Fusion 360. I used 27 gallon bins from Costco, and the dimensions you see me use are for those exact size bins. I did have a couple bins not from Costco, and they ended up working just fine with these dimensions too. The way I designed this using parameters allows for you to go in after and adjust any dimensions you might need in case you want a bigger configuration than the four bins wide by five bins tall that I'm currently showing. Or if you have any different size bins, you can also adjust those. By using components, I'm able to utilize the Open Bomb plugin in Fusion 360 to generate the exact parts list and dimensions I'll need for the lumber. The methods I will go over here can be very useful and applied to any woodworking project, not just for this bin storage rack. If you'd like to build your own storage rack, follow along and create your own design. Or if you don't want to take the time to do that, I also offer this Fusion 360 file for sale. And you can find that link in the description. We're going to start by going into our document settings and changing our units from millimeters to inches. You can set this as your default, but I prefer to have my default in millimeters. Next, you're going to go into modify and change parameters. And this is where you can set different parameters for the different dimensions of your sketch. A big benefit of this is it allows you to go back in later and adjust these values to get your uh, sketch and 3D uh, parts into the size that you want. So for this project, I'm going to set my bin width, height, and length, and I'm going to set those with tolerances in mind. So they're a little bit bigger than uh, the actual bins. I'm also going to add a total height dimension to set the max height of my floor to the ceiling, as well as the uh, lumber dimensions. So width for this one would be the width of a two by four, which is really 3.5 inches and thickness here for the width for the thickness of a 2x4 being 1.5. I threw in some additional parameters for the bins across and bins high. For these you want to make sure you set your units to no units uh, for your calculations to calculate properly. Now we're ready to start our sketch. So we're going to create a new sketch, choose our plane, and start sketching out the main components of our storage rack. I'm going to start with the bottom 2x4 that spans the width of the rack. The first dimension I entered was the thickness, so the thickness of a 2x4. And the length here is going to be a formula to determine the total length. I had a little trouble entering it in there, so I put it in the bottom right of this video. Next, we're going to sketch our vertical 2x4, which is going to go right on top of the bottom plate we just created. It's going to have a thickness of our 2x4, and the height is actually going to be our total height minus two more 2x4s. So minus thickness times two. And now for the last part, we're going to put in the rails that the storage bins will sit on. These are going to be two by two pieces of lumber. So I'm just reusing the thickness parameter and just setting it arbitrarily on the vertical piece. Next, we'll put a dimension to these. You can see the blue lines indicating it's not currently constrained to any dimension. So we're going to set that dimension constraint, and we're going to set it to our bin height from the top of the 2x4 to the top of our base plate. So that gives us 17 inches from the bottom of the storage bin to the top of it. Now we have our three main parts for this whole project. There are of course more parts but they're all going to be duplicates of the rest of these. Uh, so 
So first step is extruding these current parts we have. The key here is when you extrude these that you do a new body. You can see I'm extruding it to the width dimension of our 2x4, setting it as a new body. And I'm going to go back to our sketch, select the other components, extrude that the width of a 2x4, and be sure to set it as a new body. I'll do that one more time for the rail. This time it's going to be the dimension of our bin, so it's going to be the bin length. And make sure to do new body. So you can see here now we have our three bodies. I'm going to rename these to uh, have them make a little more sense. And then the next step would be to turn these bodies into components, which is really important for the parts list we're going to generate at the end of this to know exactly how many parts we need of each piece. So to do that, you're going to right click on bodies and create components from bodies. That'll remove them from the body section and create the three components. Next, going to select the whole document, right click there and physical material. And here I'm going to change the material to wood which isn't super important, but it makes it look a little nicer. Now that we have our three main components, going to replicate and create the rest of them, starting with the stud here and using a rectangular pattern. We already have the stud selected. We'll choose the axes that go across the bottom plate as well as the rail. And I make sure the spacing is set to spacing. The first quantity is going to be bins across plus one, and the distance would be our bin width plus thickness. Our second axis is just going to be two, and the distance is going to be the bin length minus width, which you can see puts it nicely on that rail. Now we're going to do the same thing for the plate. So we're going to go ahead and select it, do the rectangular pattern again. Choosing our axis C's uh, be the same this time as well. Our quantity will be two, and our distance is going to be the bin height minus the width. On our second axis, this one is also going to be two. The distance will be the total height minus thickness. So it puts it nicely on top of our studs. Not quite yet done with the rails and need to put two more on top of those top pieces. So I'm going to select both of them, do the rectangular pattern again. This time I only need one axis. A quantity of two and the distance will be our thickness of our two by four placing it right on top last we're going to do our rails which is a little more steps but essentially the same thing we're going to do our rectangular pattern again for the one rail axis across the bottom plate our distance is going to be our bin width minus our thickness we could do a copy here, but I've seen issues with that. I choose to do the rectangular pattern. Now we're going to do the rectangular pattern again, but this time selecting both of the rails we have. Our axis is going to be across the bottom plate and up the stud. And the quantity for across the plate will be our bins across, and the distance will be our bin width plus our thickness. On the second axis, this is going to be bin high, and the distance will be our bin height. 
So at this point, we've completed our sketch and drawing. We have all of our components. If you go back into the modify and change parameters, you should be able to adjust these and the drawing will adjust accordingly. So if we want five bins across, you can see now that's adjusted five across. Six high, you can see it's spilling over our top plates, but that's because of our total height. So if you have taller ceilings, you can adjust that taller height and accommodate more bins high. You can also adjust any of the bin width, bin height, or bin length parameters if you have different size bins. You can see here I'm messing with some of them slightly, and you can see the drawing accommodating each of those different dimensions. Now that our 3D model is complete, our last step here would be to get our bill of materials. So I'm first going to save the drawing, and then I'm going to open up the utilities for OpenBOM, uh, the plugin add-in. If you don't have OpenBOM, I'll create another video here and link it so that you can get that installed. But we're simply just going to run it, and it's going to spit out our exact bill of materials needed for each of these parts. You can see it comes out with three parts, which are the three main components we originally sketched out. And you'll see the quantities there and dimensions for the exact quantities and dimensions that we need for each of these parts. So six two by fours at 91 and a half inches, 10 two by fours at 91 inches, and 40 two by fours at 30 inches. And that's it. At this point, you can go ahead and purchase your lumber and get it all cut out and then go ahead and build it. Um, one extra step I did here, I'll show you right now, is I created a bin the size of my actual bin dimensions just to get a visual in Fusion 360 on if it was going to fit and what the tolerances will look like. Um, if you trust my drawing, you, you don't need to do this. or if you have a uh, different bin dimensions, might be a good idea to, to step through this. So I'm creating a sketch on one of the front parts of our drawing. These dimensions, I went and just measured directly from the bin and are inputting them here. I didn't create any sort of parameters for them. For this line and angle. I, I didn't really know the angle and I, I didn't really care. I knew the base dimension. I was about 15 and a quarter. Um, so I went with that and then was ultimately able to, to move the drawing left or right and, and see that it would fit in there. Lastly, I'm going to extrude it, the bin length, which isn't entirely accurate, it's a little bit shorter than that, but it's fine for what I wanted to do with it here, just to get a little visual. And that does it. Check out part two to see the actual build.